Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing and the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Uh, we read yesterday, the Revelation is a book that promises us a blessing. If we'll, Blessed is he that, uh, that readeth, that heareth, and, and doeth the things that are within the book. We want to be doers of the word so that we're blessed in our life. Uh, you can be saved. You can trust Christ as your Savior, uh, but you want to be a doer of the things that he's called you to do. And that's the reason we grow in his word. We'll talk about that more today. But let's pick up in verse 4. It says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Uh, John was given this um, vision when he was on the Isle of Patmos, uh, possibly and probably taken up to heaven to see the whole thing. Uh, an out-of-body experience that he had, uh, that the Lord uh, showed him, and he met with the Lord in all this. It says, Grace be to you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne. Now, uh, the seven spirits which are before the throne, I believe that refers to the seven spirits of God. We'll go into Isaiah 11.1. 1. So what's it talking about? It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. It's referring to Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. It mentions the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. That's uh, seven. That is, uh, you know, as we count there. Um, so we're referring to the work of the Holy Spirit uh, that uh, only comes uh, through faith in Christ. Uh, we are able to quench the Holy Spirit. We want to uh, listen to the Holy Spirit in our life. How do we do that? We listen to God's word so that he can teach us and uh, we always want to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. But how, how are we going to do that? We need to be in prayer. We need to uh, look at our, examine our life. We shouldn't have sin uh, prevailing in our life. If we do, we confess it. We forsake it. We move on. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, it says in 1 John 1, 9. Uh, but we don't lose our salvation when we sin. We know that he paid every sin that was on the cross. But if we're living in sin, we're not going to have a blessed life. We can sure wreck our life in a lot of ways. And uh, we always want to be aware of those things. Verse 5. Uh, so uh, John wrote this and it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. How did he do that? I'll try to go through this one really fast, but God loves us. He hates our sin. Our sin will cause us to go to hell. All of sin. Uh, we deserve uh, the wages of sin is death that we deserve hell. But God sent his son, born of a virgin. He got in the flesh. He came and he lived the only perfect life. Uh, to go to heaven, we have to be perfect. We're not perfect. We have sin. We deserve hell. To go to heaven, you can't earn it. It's not of works. There's nothing we can do to get rid of our sin. Christ died for our sins. He died on the cross. That he's, he's uh, willing and ready to receive you if you will simply trust what he did. He paid the sin debt. When you trust what he did, he gives you his perfection. There's one thing he calls you to do to be saved, and he calls you to have a change of mind that you can't save yourself, that there's no work at all that you can do. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, not, that uh, it's not of works lest any man should boast. No one will be in heaven. Not one through all of time has been in heaven. It says about Abraham that it says in Genesis and it repeats it in uh, Romans. It says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. David said, blessed is the man to whom God uh, imputeth his righteousness without works, that there's not one work. It's not a combination of works that can get you to heaven. He calls us to believe. When we believe on him, he gives us his righteousness. Now, uh, John 3.16 says uh, that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but 
have everlasting life. How do you, how can you know you now have God's perfection? How how can you know you're going to go to heaven? You know you can go to heaven because now you can't go to hell because he says you shall not perish. That means you now can't go to hell because there was a death that needed to be paid. For this sin, there's a death that needed to be paid. And Christ said, I'll pay the death for you. And he rose again in the same power that rose him again will take us to heaven one day. You can know you're going to heaven because of what he did. It says he is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He's the first one that rose from the dead. We can know that we have eternal life because he went to have he went to heaven. He already was raised from the dead and that's how we have hope. If Christ be not risen, we're most miserable indeed, but he is risen. It says unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. You're washed in the blood of the lamb if you trust what he did on the cross. And it says, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. If you're a child of God, you're now a part of the royal priesthood. One day we'll come back with him. And if we go that far in Revelation, we'll come back with him and we'll rule and reign as a royal priesthood of God, but we already have that position now, and we're called to tell people about Jesus Christ. The one thing that we're called to do is we're called to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But he says, we want to be living a life that is reflective of that. We want to live in a way uh, that we show that we're believers in him. Uh that as a repeat. Second Timothy uh, chapter four, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Now see, one day Christ is coming back. We're going to get into that a little bit today. He's coming back at his appearing and he's, he, one day at the end of everything, you know, he's going to judge, uh, the quick, those are that are alive in him and the dead. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebu rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and sh shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. We're called to have sound doctrine. We want to be in the scripture. If we don't have sound doctrine, it's going to be very easy to fall into error. And I believe uh, that passage is also referring to saved people, that saved people are not enduring sound doctrine. The world is not enduring sound doctrine, but they're saved people. They've trusted Christ as Savior, but they don't want to hear about the things that can correct them. We don't want to be like that. We want to be corrected. We want to have God's full blessing in our life and have that abundant life uh, that may come with persecution. It says, yea, and all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you want to live a godly life, you want to live according to his word, you may bring uh, persecution on yourself. Realize that that's a blessing too. Uh, verse seven says, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him. Now that's speaking of the of the Jews, that the Jews are going to see that he's coming in the clouds one day. And it says, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now this is speaking to the second coming. It's not referring to the rapture. We'll get into the rapture uh, when we get into uh, Revelation 4. And we'll, So a lot of people get confused and a lot of people say there's not going to be a rapture. They say, um, you know, things are going to progress. And a lot of people think we're already into uh, parts of Revelation. We're actually not past Revelation 3 in terms of the timeline. Revelation 4, uh, there's a voice, a trump sounds and a voice is heard, come up, here, come up hither. And uh, God's going to call his uh, children home. Uh, that is what is called the rapture. Um, we'll talk about that when we get there. But there's coming a day when he's going to come back and he's going to set his foot down and he's going to uh, set his foot on the Mount of Olives and it'll crack in two and he will uh, rule and reign. Matthew 24, it says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and there shall 
all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So he's going to be coming back, and uh, it'll be a terrible time when he does come back, the tribulation period, and they're going to mourn because he's going to uh, set up his kingdom, and he's going to take those that have taken the mark of the beast uh, and uh, send them uh, to uh, hell at that point. Uh, so a lot of people will have taken that mark, and uh, we don't want people that we know uh, to be in that situation. It's the importance of us sharing the gospel. Zechariah 12, 10, it says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Again, it's talking about the Jews, that the Jews uh, pierced him at the cross, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. The Jews missed their Messiah. They missed it in Jesus Christ, but uh, grace and truth has come uh, to us in this age, this dispensation of grace. Daniel 7 says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Uh, Jesus is one day coming back in the clouds. Now, Daniel, he sealed up that vision. It's not the complete revelation of Jesus Christ, but he saw the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Jesus Christ. Who is the Son of God? Jesus Christ. Uh, when Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, uh, the king, he looked down and he said, I see a fourth man, and he is as the Son of God walking among them. Daniel seven fourteen, And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. See, one day he's going to set up that kingdom, and he's going to come back. Now, John 19, 37, this is talking about the first time he was here. It says, and again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. When he went to the cross, they did look on him whom they pierced, but he's coming back one day and they'll look at him, on him as he returns and is coming back. They'll look on him whom they have per pierced. If only the Jewish people would uh, look at passages like Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22, 16. It says, for dogs have compassed me, the assembled of the wicked have enclosed, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. It was speaking of the crucifixion. This was prophesied 400 years before they even invented uh, crucifixion when the Romans invented it, that uh, it was prophesied that Jesus would go to the cross. But one day he is coming back. We'll stop there for today. We'll pick up there uh, tomorrow. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.